Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, making fresh produce available in the heart of Ward 5 and recognizing legends from our music and local government communities coming up next. Here to discuss these topics and much more is the councilman who represents Ward 5. You know who it is. It's Mr. Cedric Career. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, trying to stay nice and cool Whew. during the heated days of summer once again. You know, every year I always say this. It takes a little bit out of me. Born and raised in this community. Same here. Just like a little Same here. bit. And uh, it's just it's just tough. Same yeah. here. I've been here a long time. Not as long as you. Yeah. Uh, but I've uh, been here 35 plus years. Oh, that's a long time. And, and the summers, when you get up over 107, yes. uh, you know, it, that's pretty rough. You know, I was, yeah. I'm good to about a hundred, anything over 105, I'm done. And I just, so I that's just, that's about I my just, cutoff yeah, to 107 just, is just, mine, arbitrarily. Yeah, yeah. arbitrarily, yeah. right, absolutely right. Arbit arbitrarily, 105 over, I'm done. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not only is it is it really uh, brutal on your skin, you feel like you're about to burn up sometimes, <laughs> but it's dangerous. And yeah. if we've seen yeah. that we've some uh, what happened, we have some unfortunate incidents happen in Red Rock Canyon, yeah. um, just recently in Red Rock Canyon. Uh, Valley of Fire. Yeah, Valley of Fire. Mm -hmm. We've had some incidents. So uh, if you're out there, continue to be vigilant, continue to hydrate, continue to let somebody know if you're going to go on a hike. Yeah. Uh, cover up, sunscreen, wear a hat. If you have one of those cooling devices, then, uh, you know, please yeah. pick them up. Don't mess you. around with this. Yeah. It's, I, it's nothing to mess with. It is nothing to mess around with. And, and every year we say this, but every year people want to I try know. to push the I limits know. for some reason. And um, sometimes unfortunate things happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we set a record this summer, tied a record, uh, where we had 10 straight days of 110 right. or right. higher. Sure. Uh, we had one day that didn't quite make it there, and then we had another string of days after that where it did exceed 110 again. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough summer. It is a tough summer. You know, it's, it's crazy when you're a kid and growing up in this weather, you just don't even think about it. Right. You just go out and, and you're hot. The bottom of your feet would be sizzling from because <laughs> you're running around the concrete. Yeah, you, you, right. you know, back in the day, you would you know run through the sprinklers. You would drink out the uh, the faucet yeah. on the on the hot water out of the out Ugh. of the the faucet there, and you just kind of did your thing when you were kids. But as you get older, yeah. <laughs> Don't Thanks do change. those things, yes. you learn. Don't do those things. <laughs> so, Well, Councilman, as you said, born and raised in Ward 5. Uh, for those of you not exactly sure where Ward 5 is located, well, don't worry, we're going to show you on the map. Basically encompasses our downtown. It's an interesting ward because it goes all the way from the downtown, as you can see there, but extends all the way to the northwest, too. So really an interesting ward, diverse ward. Uh, geographically and uh, even culturally, it is. And look, we're downtown. Uh, we deal with mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of challenges in downtown quarter. A lot of advances in downtown quarter, going all the way out to Lone Mountain area uh, and Road area, and, and and everything in between. Historic West Side, uh, big box stores, yeah. and Lake Mead and Rainbow. So we have a very diversified ward, which yeah. is which is pretty neat because yeah. it, a lot of different neighbors, a lot of different opportunities to do a lot of a lot yeah. of great things and a very diversified ward, I think. I think one of the most diversified wards in the city. Yeah, absolutely, no question about that. And, and I love what you're doing, uh, especially to um, shake things up a little bit in the ward as far as uh, helping the community. I mm -hmm. love this, you posted this on Facebook. You said, it's great to work with the Just One Project to host our amazing farmer's markets in the heart of Ward 5. And I know one of the things we've talked about on this program, Councilman, is the food deserts that exist within the valley, and we've got a, a few in Ward 5. We do. We have a food insecurity. 25% of the population experiences some form of food insecurity, uh, which is 25% too many. Uh, we're lucky to have the Just One Project, which is based right in the uh, Ward 5 as well, and putting on that uh, uh, farmer's market, giving out fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, food to community, just come out, be a part of it. They do an amazing job. They've got a great operation that happens at Just One. I urge people to look them up if you don't know, yep. and also to support them because they need all the help they can get because you can see the work that they're doing every single day trying to dispel that uh, food insecurity yeah. and to get healthy foods and to get uh, opportunities to get our active adults as well as our youth, as well as families that are in need. Yeah, and part of their message also too isn't just to make the food available, but it's to help you understand, you know, what are some of the things that are going to be really good for yes. you as well. Yes, too, yes, yes. So. And, that's, and that's one of the challenges that we face sometimes is that we don't always get the best quality of exactly. foods. 
a lot of processed foods, a lot of fast foods, stuff that's cheap but not quite the best for you. Exactly. So we need to we need to shift that paradigm as well. And Councilman, that's we should also mention we're still going strong where we're growing hydroponically. Yes crops in Ward 5. It's an amazing project. It is. Our urban farm is yeah. is, is booming, is blossoming. Um, you know, our first harvest we had with our urban farm, with MGM Resorts Urban Farm, was 55 pounds, which is about a third there. And so we're growing, we're giving that back out to the community, to our active adult centers out of there, and it's just it's growing. And they look, that's just phase one. We have uh, plans to do, build out all the James Gate Park, so stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exciting stuff. and. Who would have thought you'd be growing veggies in the middle of yeah. the city, but we're doing it. <laughs> we are doing, we're doing it. it. Uh, Councilman, since you've been on the show last, we had the 4th of July. It's a yeah. big, a big holiday across the country, especially here in Las Vegas. You, uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, what a fantastic 4th. You were busy that day. The Summerlin Parade this morning was outstanding. Then you honored uh, hero Umberto Garcia with the USA Injury Law Group, and then you went and saw fireworks at Floyd we Lamb did. Park. So. It was it was a full day. Uh, you know, if you didn't feel patriotic that day, then uh, I don't know if you can ever feel patriotic. And yeah, some of the parade is great. What a huge parade! Yeah. What an amazing job that they do to put that on. Uh, the crowds are there. The kids were there. Yeah. A lot of participants, which was a lot of fun. We rode Big Red, yeah. which is always good, our old fire truck. Uh, U.S. Injury Law, uh, honoring Umberto Garcia for the work that he's done is fantastic. Then we ended it at a beautiful Floyd Lamb Park for the fireworks, and that was great, too. What a great turnout. Uh, I was with Councilwoman Bruni as well as Councilwoman Polinsky uh, out there, and it was, it was great. It's interesting, the parade, we've talked about this, the parade started off there in Summerlin as kind of a neighborhood thing mm -hmm. with just some kids and, you know, people kind of decorating their cars uh, as floats, if you will. And that has turned into one of the premier parades anywhere it now. Is. Yeah, yeah I, so. I agree. And look, they've got a tremendous amount of volunteers. Uh, I, I met and saw so many old friends that are now volunteers, and they seem to work year round now. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous community. It's uh, they start the, if it's the parades on the fourth, on the fifth, they start planning for next year. Yeah, it's amazing. And they they put a lot of time into it, and it shows. Um, you can tell. It's not just a, you know, just come out anymore and just you know drive down the street. It's very well right, organized. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a big They've deal. Got different sections going on. Yeah. They got it all. I mean, the parking from uh, from parking to the parade. Yeah. They've got it all down. People get there early. They're camped out. They get those they shady do, spots. They did you the know. night before. People yeah. were camping and yeah. try to reserve their spots. Yeah, because you want to be in the shade. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of lot of shade along through there with trees and stuff. So that's I, pretty cool. I think they were just coming out to see me. I, I, I think I personally think that they, you know, Chris set out the night before. Right, there. the yeah, night before exactly. they got their spot so they can see me wave to them. Exactly. So thank you for putting in the effort, everybody. Exactly. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Umberto Garcia, I want to mention him. Uh, basically a hero. This young man prevented what could have been a shooting at uh, Turnberry Towers. Here. He yeah. did. He yeah. did. And he saw, well, you know, I, I, he's a hero on one hand, and then it's a tough spot on the other hand because things could have rapidly changed. Oh Someone gosh, was, yeah. was, was carrying a firearm. Uh, he subdued the person. He, he made sure that uh, people were safe around them. And he is a hero, but it, it's scary. Yeah, it is scary because who knows what could have happened. Uh, and I always say, I'm not sure what I would have done in that yeah. situation. Yeah. You know, you, everybody might say, well, this is what I would have done. Yeah. Well, until it actually happens to you and you're faced with that, you have no idea what yeah, you would have done. Say, so he, he, please, he jumped in action. Please don't ever put me in that mm -hmm. position. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, the fireworks. We love the fireworks that we do out at Floyd Lamb because you know, if people are out watching those, they're not setting off illegal fireworks yeah. in their neighborhood. <laughs> so yeah. well, that's become it, a real problem. It, it is a problem, and it's scary. I mean, you can be at your own home. Yep, lots and, of fires. And you can hear the fireworks going off around the, around the corner or down the street that are so close. Um, your pets are, are affected by that as well. Oh, yeah. And it's a dangerous situation. You know, people, we, people have been driving out to Pahrump getting the fireworks and trying to bring them back in for decades, as far back as I can remember, yep. and they shoot them off in the middle of neighborhoods, which doesn't quite make sense to me, no. because you shoot it up, it comes back down someplace, exactly. and bad things could happen. And Councilman, that is the biggest uh, and busiest night for the fire department. Yeah. Uh, all the fire departments in the Valley, from Las Vegas, Clark County, Henderson, North Las Vegas, uh, running all night long. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, chief Gray, our uh, fire chief, Fernando Gray, was telling me that that one night um, they have as many calls as they'll get an entire day just in that, mm -hmm. that small window of time. 
that's generally as many calls as they get on a full day. Yeah. So it, just, it gives you an idea of just how busy they are. It is. So. It's a bad situation. I was in Los Angeles one year for Fourth of July, and you were sitting up. You can. I was at a place you could see the entire city. It looked like there were uh, fireworks going off throughout the entire area, and it was just amazing. I almost looked like a war zone. Like mm -hmm. people, like you know, people were bombing. Mm -hmm. How many fireworks are going on? Yeah throughout the entire valley. And like you say, Councilman, those things go up, pieces of it are gonna come sure, down. And sure, the embers, and, 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 they, it's, get, and it's yeah. all flammable. It, right, 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 right. It's just that simple. So please don't do that. Folks. I know. Come to our do. show. Come yeah. on. You see the councilman too. And then there's so, so many fireworks shows that are around the yeah, city, which are, are free. great. They're free. Yeah. The plaza did a great one. Yeah, got, downtown, uh, right? Downtown one. So um, if you want to enjoy fireworks, a lot of opportunities to do it. Yeah. We have them. A lot of casinos have them, the plaza has them downtown. So please, exactly. be smart. Be safe, exactly. Um, Councilman, uh, this was really a, a great event too um, that we want to talk about a little bit. Uh, you had posted this on Facebook. You said, a beautiful morning with the mayor and colleagues for the 15th anniversary of the citywide Unity Prayer Breakfast. Yes. And this is a, this is a great little tradition, isn't it? It is. Well, uh, you know, I said, I, I gave remarks there. And if you look at places around the world, if you take what's going on in, let's say, Palestine and Jerusalem and the West Bank and in uh, different parts, you've got countries that are fighting wars over religion. You've got the Arabs, you've got the, you got the, the Jewish religious, you've got Israel trying to take over, all, all different things. And here we are in one room, you've got Catholics, you've got Mormons, you've got if you're yeah. Baptists, all different religions coming together to celebrate and to show unity when it comes to religion. Uh, that doesn't happen everywhere around the no, world. No, sure doesn't. You know, you've got world leaders that are negotiating peace treaties from countries that are fighting wars over religion. And here we are unable to come together. So I think it was a beautiful breakfast, a beautiful event. Um, I have to give a, a thank you to uh, Pastor Hatch for the work that he's done to curate this and to keep it going. The mayor, a huge proponent yeah. of it. We have to thank the mayor for continuing to uh, get the tradition, keep it going, and to bring us all together. Yeah. I think it's important. I, I agree, Councilman. And it, it's interesting, to your point, uh, places around the world where you'll have different religious factions fighting each other. It's funny, when they come to the United States, those, those differences seem to be yeah. set aside because people with those same religious backgrounds that are, that are living here, we tend not to have the tensions mm -hmm. in this country that that we see in other places, yeah. thank goodness. Well, you know, I, in growing up, you whether you were French was someone that was Jewish here, or someone that was Mormon. We have a, a large Mormon population, obviously, uh, and uh, Methodist, Catholic. It didn't make a difference. I went to Catholic. I, I was grew up yeah. Methodist. I went to a Catholic high school. Yeah, Bishop uh, Gorman. Yeah, right? Bishop Gorman. Uh, that wouldn't happen in many countries. Actually, you would be shunned upon. Um, you know, when I was in Africa, there's a large Muslim population in Ghana, and you had some that were uh, Catholics out of there, and you saw Mormon missionaries. Who were who were there? It it just shows you that we live in a very diversified yeah. world, um, but many countries don't see it like that, yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. Well, good for you for mm -hmm. keeping that tradition going. Glad that we're we're doing that in Las Vegas. And then, uh, right in the heart of Ward Five, this was great too. You posted this on Facebook. You said it was a pleasure to welcome gospel artist Pastor Mike Jr. and Stellar Gospel Music Awards founder Don Jackson to the West Las Vegas Arts Center for the Stellar Award. Art Symposium, and for councilmen, for, for people that don't know what the Stellar Awards are, uh, bring, please bring us up to speed. Yeah, the Stellar Awards were founded uh, by Don Jackson out of Chicago to honor uh, greatness in the gospel music arena. And so they started years ago um, hosting this, this sort of like the Oscar, I mean the Emmys and the Oscars uh -huh. and the Grammys of gospel music awards. Um, and started off in Chicago, it moved, it was in Atlanta, it was in Vegas, it left, it now it's coming back. And they are really planting their seed once again here in Las Vegas. I have to thank Mr. Jackson for that because he has he really been a trailblazer to, to do this. They're launching their own uh, TV station uh, as great. well. Uh, they had the show over at the Orleans, and it was great. So Don Jackson is an absolute, uh, he, as you see, is an absolute icon um, in, in this field. So thank you to all of them for choosing Las Vegas 
and also follow the community work that they did. They just don't come into a community and do the show and leave. As you can see, they are very supportive of the Art Center that's there in the West Las Vegas Art Center. Uh, we thank them for that. They had uh, another events that are taking place throughout the course of mm -hmm. that week. So it wasn't just come in and leave and do the show and come out. They are ingrained that's in the awesome. community. So we thank them for that. Well, Councilman, it's awesome too that um, they've selected Las Vegas of all it the places is. they could go. Uh, and it's funny because Sometimes people don't think we have very much religion in in Las yes. Vegas, but here we are hosting the Stellar Awards, yes. which highlight Stella gospel, gospel music. music awards yeah, how about right that? here in Las Vegas, so it's pretty pretty impressive. But then again, it is Las Vegas. It is Las Vegas. So I I I, I think every convention, I think every major sporting event, uh, <laughs> I think that uh, any 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 major con uh, show should be in Las Vegas. Exactly. Why wouldn't it be? I mean, it's the best. It is the best. We're well prepared for, we have the rooms, the restaurants, we have the shows, uh, we have the space. And then look, everybody comes to Vegas. Right, right. If you want your attendance to grow. Come here. And you want everybody to come to your show, where should you go? You exactly. should go to Las Vegas. Exactly. Some other city, yes. Las Vegas. Yes. Some, Some other, other city. city yeah. Las, we won't name gotta names. Go. You gotta, I'm not going to name <laughs> names. I'm not going to go there. I'm yes. not going to say that. Yes. But I'm but, just saying, pick a place. Yes. Think of it in your head, and then compare it to here. It's like, got to go with here. No, no. How many yeah, times so. have you traveled someplace, have gone to someplace, and I always say this joke, it's not a matter of if everybody you know comes to Vegas. It's a matter of when everybody exactly. you know comes to Vegas. Exactly. And once you live there, and you even found this, once you even 30 plus years ago, once you moved here, oh, well, my buddy lives in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, right. He knows everybody. I'll call him. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah, worry. Exactly. Yes, yes. You're you're like the defunct mayor. No matter what you do, now that you live in right. Vegas, you are the defunct mayor, and you got it all dialed right. in. Right. You know, you know everything there is to know. So, <laughs> and they're coming. Good. We keep coming. We we love it. We love it. Uh, Councilman, West Las Vegas Art Center. Um, for those not a hundred percent up to speed on what's offered there. Enlighten everyone a little bit. The West Las Vegas Art Center has been uh, offering summer classes for, for youth for, for decades now. Uh, they have a, a number of things in the arts, whether it's, whether it's a dance, whether it's music, whether it's entertainment in general, they are there and uh, they do a great job. They have a camp that takes place. They will uh, have a camp, they have a year in a year summer show, which is usually amazing. Uh, the costumes, the lightings, everything is just fantastic. So they do a fantastic job. Well, speaking of youth, Councilman, I love this. Uh, you really engage uh, a lot of students uh, through uh, your office during the summer yes, here at City Hall. we do. And uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, our latest Career Civic Engagement Day was outstanding. We had all the city's interns spend the day with us, uh, and they're all amazing. They are. Look, when oh, I got in there. office, we, we probably had about 20 or 30 youth wow. that were there. And, and uh, when I got in office, I walked in office and I said, man, what a, look at this. Look where I am. Look what's going on. Uh, I would love to expose this to the youth in yeah. our community. Growing up here, I never had an opportunity to go to City Hall. That, yeah. uh, only time you went to City Hall was when you had to pay your ticket, you had to go to court. You know, the jail was downstairs <laughs> yeah. at the old City that's Hall. Right, that's right. Uh, Metro was there. Yeah. And so uh, only bad things kind of were in City were, Hall. Were City right? Hall. Yeah. And so I wanted to dispel that and I wanted to expose our youth to City Hall. Uh, I think we as a country have gotten away from civic engagement, yeah. right, a little bit, and so it was great to bring that back. So we've done youth civic engagement days uh, since I've gotten in office. We've had thousands of kids that come through. They spend the day with me. They spend the day with uh, different departments, including our communications yeah. team, yeah, they which were is down always here. great. Yeah, they were and, here through the studio. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, the comms team were fantastic. The kids really love it. They come out here to the studio. They meet with the different team members, and, and they learn, and they see what it's all about, and it's great. And we. This summer, we worked with our, our youth development social innovation team, got our interns who were interning with the summer, spent the day with them. Uh, they were spent the day with me. We had some great fellowships and great conversations. Uh, we had lunch. They went down to our courtyard and saw a homeless courtyard. They come back in the chambers. We created a mock uh, city hall uh, for, the, for the day, city, city uh, council members. Uh, they were there, and then people came up and gave public comment. It was great. I think they really learned a lot. They had a lot of fun. But, I usually have a lot more fun than they have, but I just love having them there. It's fantastic. Uh, you, the kids who go through that program, too, have gone on and done some nice things. They uh, have. Once they've uh, been through our little intern program, go on to college, do yes. all kinds of things. Yeah, so. they do. And it gives them a good insight mm -hmm. of what's going on, because you really don't know until you know. Right. You might assume that what happens at City Hall, but you really don't have an opportunity to see it. Look, we've had kids that have got dropped off by their parents or grandparents, 
and they've sat through the first introductory period, and they've said to to me, they say, "Can I stay for the day two? <laughs> <laughs> we should do a civic engagement day for for adults." I'm learning things I never knew. Yes, so. yes, yes, and uh, it's great for them to see it. It's a learning experience. It's a fun day. We have one rule: you have a lot of fun. Yep. And I think mission accomplished. Yeah. How many years you've been doing this civic engagement? Oh, we've day? been doing it for five years yeah, since I've yeah, been in office. Yeah. Five and a half years, and we've we it's, it's not a formal process. We we just sort of bring in kids and we get a group. We've had Girl Scouts come in. We've yeah, had yeah. Boy Scouts come in. Yeah. We've got our interns come in. Uh, we've had just friends of mine that I've known that have gathered kids together. And it really is a great experience. Yeah. Well, good deal. Mm -hmm. Keep it going, Councilman. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great way to get that kind of inside look at, at really what government deals with versus what you, especially when you're young, what, yes. you, think, what you think goes on, exactly. And then, uh, Councilman, you've been great at doing this. Uh, you've recognized so many of our, our civic leaders uh, over the years at Legacy Park. Um, there's a big ceremony, an induction ceremony every year for that. But you also do things like that in between time. And you posted this on Facebook. You said, happy 83rd birthday to one of our community leaders, former Nevada Assemblyman Harvey Munford. And there he is. You, you know, Assemblyman Munford uh, has done so much in our community. He was when the, he was in the Clark County School District. He was at CSN, yeah. he was at UNLV. Yeah. He said, I can't begin to tell you how many people that I talked to. And even when I post this on social media, oh, my former teacher, yeah. oh, my former this. And people love Mr. Munford. Yeah. He is just a, a humble person. Um, he is the nicest person. And uh, he, he's, I remember him growing up. He lived right on Sunny Place, which is around the corner from where I grew up, uh, his home. And he would open up his home every Halloween for kids to come out and yeah, do yeah, a, big, yeah. a big event. Uh, you know, recently we changed this from Sunny Place to Harvey Munford yeah, Street. Yeah, that's right. Which that's is, right. We did that here a few months ago. Yeah, and it's yeah. well deserved. Yeah. Uh, he has been a leader in our community for so long, and I haven't met one person that doesn't love Harvey Munford. Now, didn't he also at one time play professional basketball? He played basketball. He, 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 I think he's in the uh, Hall of Fame for his college. And then he played professional basketball for a minute. And he's done a lot of different things. Was, he, was, he, with the, horseman. was he with the Lakers? Was he with the, I think he might have been yeah, with the yeah, Lakers yeah. For, for a minute. So. Well, he is, he, is, he is a humble giant, yeah. and uh, I just remember him very fondly. He'd be tough to forget because he's so tall. Yeah, yeah, he's a, uh, he's a tall gentleman. He is a yes, tall is. gentleman, but I remember him having his horses. You know, we live in a horse community, uh -huh. even around where he lives, and he always had his horses out and, and riding his horses in the El Dorado Parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would see Mr. Munford, and, um, just, a, just a good man. Yeah, well, and really engaged in the community and, and did so many things, that's true. Professional basketball, to teacher, yeah. educator, a horseman, and then he was a Nevada Assemblyman. He for, was for he the would, whole but, run. But, you know, the interesting part though is that he taught uh, the K through 12 system. He taught at the community college system, and he taught at the uh, four-year yeah. college system. Uh, very rarely do you find someone that has done all that. Normally, you find someone who goes into higher ed or someone who's a K through 12 teacher and they sort of stay there yeah, and exactly. that's their career. They don't switch around. They don't yeah. really switch around, but it, it probably dictates more to the growth of our education system mm -hmm. also. Right, right. Right, as UNLV was just starting getting going back, back in the day, community colleges just started getting going, they needed teachers. Here he is readily available and he yeah. answered the call of service back then. So. I, 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 he, he led the charge. Yeah, I'm glad he's going great. strong at 83 yes. years old. Uh, happy birthday, uh, Harvey. I wish you many more. So, <laughs> well, Councilman, our time always goes fast. Uh, a lot does. to talk about. And uh, once again, we're, we're getting to the end. Uh, but we want to tell everybody out there, hey, you know, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilman Creer, you can find him on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also contact him by picking up the phone, 702-229-6405, or send him an email. His address is C career at lasvegasnevada.gov and here one of his great staff will get right back to you so well good show we'll see you great in six show. weeks with Thank another you. update uh maybe things will be cooler by then hopefully i Just don't know I, I guess who knows you know usually it, it cools off labor day maybe <laughs> yeah. after labor day yeah maybe uh, not sometimes maybe not so, <laughs> yeah so we will keep our fingers crossed exactly. that it cools off just a little bit and you look just a little bit makes a big difference we'll take it anything yes. for, to you 105 me 107 anything yes. below that is a win we'll so. take it <laughs> that thank sounds you good. great to have you on the show we'll see you in six weeks 
And don't miss our next show beginning on August 10th with Ward 6 City Councilwoman Nancy Bruni. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also, look for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to sign up for our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.